In this video, I'm going to show you how to account for convertible debt according to IFRS. So international accounting standards are different than U.S. GAAP in that you need to separate the two components of the convertible debt. You've got the debt itself, so let's say there's a promise to pay $1,000 in 5 or 10 years, and then you've got the conversion feature, the option, right? The option to convert to common shares or preferred shares, something to convert to some other type of security. Okay, so you've got this convertible debt. The question is, how do we bifurcate, how do we separate these two components, because IFRS says we're going to have debt, and then this is going to be equity. Okay, so the conversion feature is going to be accounted for as equity. So we're going to use something called the residual method, and that's going to require us to do this. We're going to take the fair value of the convertible debt on the date of issuance. Okay, so the date that this uh, debt is issued, when we're talking about the convertible debt, we're talking about the whole thing, talking about the conversion option plus the debt, the whole thing. How do we know what the fair value is on the date of issuance? That's the amount of the proceeds. Okay, whatever the issuer receives, if they receive two and a half million dollars for the convertible debt, then clearly that's the fair value of it. Okay, so that's going to be easy to figure out. What's going to be a little more difficult is the fair value of the liability component, okay, the promise to pay on the date of issuance. So once we get, we're going to basically use a discount, we're going to discount the cash flows uh, to calculate this. And that's going to be the most complicated part. I'll show you that in a minute. But we take the fair value of the whole thing minus the fair value of the liability, and that is going to give us the value of the equity component. Okay, so the equity is a residual. It's what's left over and we take the whole convertible debt and then we subtract out the fair value of the liability. That'll give us the equity. Okay, so let me give you an example. So let's say we got a company, Broccoli Sandwiches. They issue a hundred thousands of uh, dollars of bonds at par. Okay, the proceeds are a hundred thousand dollars and then the bonds are due in three years. They're going to pay interest of five percent annually. Okay, the bonds can be converted at any time to a thousand common shares. Okay, so this is convertible, convertible debt, and then the par value is a dollar a share, let's just say. Now, the market rate of interest for similar non-convertible bonds is 8%. What does that mean? If we had a bond for a company with similar risk, similar everything, except that it was just non-convertible, okay, it didn't have the conversion feature, it didn't have the option to convert to a thousand common shares then it would charge an interest rate of 8%, okay? So the difference between the 8 and the 3 or the 8 and 5%, those 3 percentage point difference really has to do with this conversion feature. And that's why it's a lower cost of uh, interest. Now, first thing we're going to do, estimate the fair value of the liability component. So we can then subtract it, okay, basically from the proceeds, which is 100,000. Clearly the fair value of the whole thing is 100,000. So we got to figure the fair value of the liability subtracted from the 100,000. That'll tell us the equity amount, the amount that is uh, related to this conversion feature. So here we go. This is the formula for present value of a single amount. So remember when we're talking about a bond, and the liability, we've got the face value, the amount to be repaid in three years uh, is $100,000. So we take $100,000 uh, divided by one plus the discount rate raised to N, right? The number of periods, we've got three periods here. Okay, and so that's uh, $79,383. Okay, then here, this piece, that's the present value of the interest payments. Remember, there's going to be three interest payments here of $5,000 a year, okay? Now, notice, you might be wondering, why did I use when I discount this 0 0.08? Why didn't I use 5%? Because when we're discounting the bond, whenever it's asking you for R in the formula, you want to use the 8%. Okay, that's the market rate of interest if it was a non-convertible bond. The only time we care about the 5% is to figure out what's the actual cash flow for the, the interest payment. So this is $12,885. That's the present value of the uh, the interest, the five grand a year for three years. Add this and this together, you get $92,269. That is the fair value of the liability component. Okay, the liability, just looking at the debt, forgetting about the conversion feature. So the fair value of the whole thing is $100,000. How do we know that? That was the proceeds that, that the investors paid for the convertible debt. So 100,000 minus the fair value of the liability component, 92,269, gives us 7,731. That is the value of the equity component, that conversion feature. It's basically an option, okay? Now, how do we make the journal entries now that we know this? Well, at the issuance date, we know that the company that is borrowing the money, they're getting $100,000 cash, and they're promising 
to pay uh, a hundred thousand. So the the face so the bond payable is going to be credited for a hundred thousand. That's what they're promising to pay in three years, and then they're debiting cash for a hundred thousand. Then I said the equity component we calculate right here. Okay, that's we calculate as the residual. This minus this was this. Okay, so seven thousand seven hundred thirty-one, and we're going to call that we're going to credit additional paid in capital okay so this is an equity account or you could say additional paid in capital hyphen conversion feature or something like that so this is additional paid in capital so it's an equity account okay we're increasing equity and then to make this balance we need some kind of a, a debit and it's gonna be a debit to discount on the bonds right a discount on the bond payable okay so our debits and our credits uh, balance so we're good to go now I'm going to show you how you could do the journal entries for the rest of this. What I did was I created an effective interest table, okay, similar to other bond problems. So you got the issue date. There's no interest or ca cash or anything like that. So the initial carrying value is 92269 That is the bond payable 100000 minus the discount is 92269 That's the initial carrying value of the bonds. And then you multiply that. You take this right here, multiply it by the market rate, 8%. And that gives you 7,381 interest expense for the end of the first year. So then we have this journal entry. We debit interest expense for 7,381. Again, that is the carrying value of the bond, 100,000 minus the equity component, the initial carrying value times 8%. Okay. And then we're going to credit cash for 5,000, okay, or credit interest payable. And then we're going to credit the bond discount. We are going to amortize. The discount over time so the difference between interest expense and the cash paid that is the discount okay so you've seen how this all is coming together here this is similar to another bond problem now the interest expense could be different each period because remember the carrying value uh the, by the amount that the uh, discount was amortized we add that to the old carrying value because it's a new carrying value we update we eventually get to a hundred thousand Okay, which is what's ultimately going to be paid back. Assuming that there's no conversion, assuming the bondholder doesn't say at one point, yeah, hey, I, I do want the common shares. Uh, when the bond matures, uh, we're going to debit bond payable for 100000 and then the uh, company's going to credit cash for 100000 as it repays uh, the creditor.